Former US President Donald Trump says he'll hold a press conference early next week. He says it will exonerate him and refute the char charges outlined in the Georgia indictment. For more on this and more on all of the issues we've just heard in that story, I'm joined by Cooley Law School professor Jeffrey Swartz. Now, thanks for joining us, Jeffrey. This case has been described as one of the most consequential uh, cr criminal cr cases in Atlanta's history. Why? Well, it's simply, it's the first time that this type of voter fraud had ever been attempted. It's also significant in that the acts that are described in this indictment are part of the indictment out of Washington that was filed by uh, Jack Smith and as, a, as a, an act that was done in furtherance of his conspiracy to defraud the American people. So we're going to kind of get this in both realms. Tell us more about the 18 others charged and what they're facing. Well, those, all of them are facing the same five-year minimum mandatory, which doesn't really mean that they'll do five years in prison, some sort of five-year minimum mandatory sentence, and up to 20 years. The rest of them are charged with specific acts as you go down the indictment. There are specific acts that they're charged with doing, which what we are called overt acts towards the completion of the conspiracy itself. Now, many Republicans, and not just the diehard MAGA variety, do point out that all these investigations have been underway for well over two years, and they're asking why the charges are being brought now just over a year before the next election. What do you say to that? Well, part of it is because there has been stalling and fighting the grand jury subpoenas that were given. People were ignoring the grand jury subpoenas. They were obstructing in the context of not complying with subpoenas and or warrants. So as a result of which, the time that it took to get all of this evidence put together is just as much the fault of the defendants who were named as it is the prosecutor who was trying to get the information. Donald Trump has been called, quote, Teflon Don for his seeming ability to shake off political scandals that would have stuck to most other politicians. How does the case in Georgia compare to the, in severity to the other three criminal indictments? And do you think this one, you know, could be enough to, to, to make Donald Trump possibly form, uh, serve some time in prison? Well, first of all, I think that, yes, in this particular case, there would be no choice as that he is the organizer, he is the manager, he is the enterprise, which would almost mandate that if anybody else goes to jail, he has to go to jail. I think his first, his absolutely first threat to that is the second indictment from Jack Smith in Washington. That one, I think, is going to be the first of the four indictments to go to trial and I think that under the sentencing guidelines and the judge that he has drawn, his chances of jail if convicted there are great, almost as certain as those in Georgia. And there are predictions that Trump will seek to move the trial to federal court. Is this because he thinks yeah. that he'll have the presidential powers to pardon himself if re-elected, or is there more to N it? No, they would still be state charges. They would just be tried in federal court. His basic claim is that he was president at the time he did them, so therefore it has to be an act committed by the president in office. Therefore, federal court is the place to go. It's not going to go to federal court. There are no federal charges. His major claim is going to be that much of what he's charged with, the overt acts, are violations of federal law as cited in the new indictment in Georgia. And that's not going to be a basis to move it because he's charged with violating Georgia law not federal law. So what evidence do we know about this case? How likely do you think that Trump will get convicted? Well, one thing we know is that there was somebody on the inside at a meeting that took place with uh, Rudy Giuliani, uh, another attorney, and uh, the former president. And there was a fourth person in the room. That person is, is only identified by a number. He's not even enumerated as an unindicted or otherwise a co-conspirator. So he clearly knows everything that was said in the room at that meeting. It will be interesting to see exactly what he recalls was said at that meeting, which may be almost a dagger uh, at um, Donald Trump. All right, Jeffrey Swartz, Cooley Law School professor, thank you very much for your time.